I have no friends. I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to hang with you. I don't want to go to your party. I don't want to go to your event. You ain't even got to invite me to your event. I'm going to be straight. I'm probably the mo would have been the most litest nigga at your shit anyway, because I'm my biggest fan. I don't need no one to help me with anything. I could do it all by myself. And I have zero friends. According to Psychology Today, 73% of Gen Z reports that they don't have any friends and feel completely lonely. And I know that's true because I see you guys in my comments saying the same thing. Hello and welcome back, friends. Let's talk about the epidemic of loneliness. As you know, many adults have become lonelier by the day. And even here on the streets of YouTube, you must have seen a couple of videos of people saying they have no friends as adults, how lonely Gen Zs are, da da da. And as a holistic wellness creator and a black woman that migrated from Nigeria to Canada in her early 20s alone, I'd like to have an open conversation on how we can better navigate this epidemic of loneliness. Uh, uh, hola. Hello and welcome back and if you're just seeing me for the first time, hey this is Tunola and right here I share valuable content so if you like the vibe please consider subscribing down below. I want to start first by differentiating between being alone and feeling lonely. Being alone refers to a physical solitude where you are deliberately by yourself and this is a choice. It's temporary and it promotes introspection, relaxation, creativity and engaging in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Loneliness on the other hand is a feeling. It's an emotional state it doesn't require you to be by yourself you could be in a party with 100 other people and still feel lonely it's an emotional state characterized by a sense of isolation disconnection or emptiness even when you're surrounded by others with loneliness there's that lack of meaningful social connection or even understanding and it leads to negative emotions like stress sadness depression anxiety and low self-esteem like everyone is always saying that they don't have friends or they struggle to find friends or they can't like make time for their friends and I feel like there's no such thing as like a third space anymore we work and then sleep and it's like there's no middle ground for like hanging out with your friends I literally saw this video the other day and this girl was saying how you can't turn up at your friend's house like how like our parents did and my mom literally did to me yesterday she phoned she was like hey like I'm coming now and I was like, oh, you don't know what I'm doing, even if I'm home. Like, it just doesn't exist for some reason. Now to hang out, it's like a whole bunch of text messages which feel like emails and having to calendar things and schedule things and fit around everyone's schedule because everyone's always busy and everyone's always working and it feels like everyone's always so busy. So take, for example, coming from a communal society like Nigeria to Canada, of course, there was that cultural shock where, you know, everything felt different in terms of how people related with each other. This part of the world in North America generally is a very individualistic society and so I had to get used to doing a lot of things by myself being by myself for example you want to paint your house here in this part of the world you can literally paint your own house back home you need to get a painter to paint your house there are a lot of cultural differences and I've talked about this in my very very old videos so I'm not going to dive into it in this video that being said you might have seen some videos from Canadian creators about how Canada is lonely how they are depressed how they want Want to leave Canada and this mostly comes from immigrants because obviously it's always different when we come from a third world country or a very communal country to somewhere like Canada where everything is very individualistic. So how does self-care tie into all of this? I know there's been a couple of contents preaching about self-centeredness and how you need to be selfish and focus on yourself and disappear for a year, da da da, you know, withdrawing from others, which I believe these contents are usually taken out of context. Content taken out of context. Mm. Self-care and personal development does not equate self isolation in fact true growth comes from you interacting with other people actively engaging with them because that allows us to apply the lessons that we learn and receive valuable feedbacks so i know most of this self-centered contents be selfish this that that contents and advice are targeted towards people pleasers because to some large extent people pleasers are in the extreme and they need some level of selfishness in them so i get it but i love to say that holistic self-care requires both 
world. It requires you tapping into your yin yang. There are days in you which you can't afford to be the life of the party and be everywhere and do everything for everyone and not create your alone time. You know, you can't also spend so much time being alone and by yourself and just ignore the old world like it doesn't exist. We need to find some sort of balance in tapping into both worlds. So rather than learning how to be extremely selfish and self-centered and having your me time all the time and not caring about the world because you're doing girl therapy, it's more helpful for us to learn self-care from a holistic point of view. Understanding that self-care also involves creating healthy boundaries, healthy relationships, instead of cutting people out of our lives at every little inconvenience. Because at the end of the day, we need people, we need relationships. Any kind of relationship requires time and effort to grow, to nurture, and instead of cutting out people because you don't like their preference or there's this tiny part of them that doesn't just fit into your own aesthetic. Having the right self-care practices encourages us to be proactive about the kinds of relationships we want, about setting healthy boundaries, about, you know, looking out for ourselves and also being there for other people, helping them, being a good friend, learning how to resolve conflicts without just cutting people out, learning how to have real meaningful conversations to foster those love long-term relationships because we all don't want to end up with superficial relationships you know it doesn't really work that way personally i mostly have low maintenance relationships which i don't know if it's a good thing or not but i'm that friend that you might talk to once a month or once in two months but every single time we have that conversation it feels like we've always been in contact and i'm always there to have a deep conversation like i'm always down for it let's have this talk let's talk the talk so like i said i really don't know if that's a good thing or not maybe i need to be more in contact with my friends but to wrap up this video on loneliness and self-care i like to remind us that as we grow older we either become lonelier or we have stronger relationships you choose which you want it's your choice and if you choose to have stronger relationships that to some large extent depends on your self-care practices on your personal development how you view yourself your self-worth are you the kind of friend you would want to have no let's just be honest with ourselves because if your answer is no then there's a lot of work you need to do are you being intentional about building healthy relationships are we learning skills to resolve conflict better so we don't end up cutting out everyone from our lives are we okay being vulnerable to some extent or taking the risk to embark on this new romantic relationship are we being intentional about choosing or attracting the right community and groups or is our desperation driving people away from us because the thing with third places I'm, I'm sure you must have heard about third places and you must have seen all these community events around in your city in your town people believe that these events and these places will encourage more community and people getting together to meet each other which is a good thing but then when you go to these events or go into these spaces you also don't want to go with a desperate energy and i feel like when we focus so much on ourselves and focus so much on oh i don't have friends i'm going here to meet people and because i need friends and i need a new friend today it just comes off with a very wrong energy because it looks like we're desperate or we're not really paying attention and at the end of the day that is still part of the reasons why we feel lonely in these spaces what we want to do instead is to let the energy feel natural we want to be natural we want to go into these spaces into these groups into these environments with that air of curiosity we want to be curious about other people be interested in learning about them you know just get out of your head get out of your mind because when you focus too much on yourself in these spaces that is when you experience social anxiety but just focus less on yourself and genuinely want to interact with other people genuinely just get to know them not so much of i'm getting to know this person because i want this person to be my friend in a nutshell being self-centered will lead to loneliness but when you're genuinely curious about other people getting to know them learning how you can help them and genuinely volunteering to help them gifting people being there for others even if it's just a listening year without expecting much in return all these acts will give us that positive feedback which will reduce stress and will boost our self-worth and our self-esteem and these are ways in which we reduce that epidemic of loneliness at least in my own opinion but let me know your own opinion on this topic
topic what is your take what do you think about this friendships loneliness self-care how does it impact all of this how are you navigating your 20s i'm also in my late 20s so yeah let's get into it in the comments if you want to learn more about holistic self-care practices i have a 30-day guide that i'm currently using it's a new comprehensive guide so if you want to get into it i have a link down below check it out and do yours you know just tailor it to your own schedule and i hope you find it helpful if you enjoyed watching this video so far please give it a thumbs up share with your friends and i'll see you guys in this next video until then keep shining